Here's a striker or a spark uh, igniter. And we, you apply it to the acetylene gas, it will ignite the gas. We adjust out to get rid of the black soot and then add oxygen into the flame. And you get the three part flame. We have the heat envelope. We have the feather. And we have the cone. As we add more oxygen, the carburizing flame or the feather gets shorter. And we adjust down right when the feather disappears into the cone. And we have a two-part flame, the heat envelope, and the cone. The cone is our most useful flame. Uh, it's also called the neutral flame. If we keep adding oxygen, then we get what's called an oxidizing flame or an oxygen-rich flame. Uh, it will keep going until eventually it will blow itself out. But this flame is a useful flame. It has a very short heat envelope and a very pointed cone. The carburizing flame is an acetylene rich flame and it can be used for annealing. In this case, we're annealing copper. Notice the colors behind the flame. The neutral flame, uh, used most often for welding, and it can be used for brazing. Uh, in this case, we're showing welding uh, oxyacetylene on mild steel with a filler rod. Here we're brazing. Notice the flux around the outside. Here we have no flux. The oxidizing flame is an oxygen-rich flame and it can be used for a number of textural things. This is called stippling and you're digging the tip of the cone into the molten pool. We can also use the oxidizing flame for cutting detail uh, so you don't have to switch over to a cutting attachment. Just turn up the oxygen and dig your cone into the molten pool. then we can adjust the flame back to a neutral flame and with a little welding rod and torch angle you can guide uh, any extra metal into holes that you've created uh, and add welding rod where it's necessary.